Hi, it's Shelly. We're back. So, again, we talked about your patient could be symptomatic. You know, the dizziness, the syncope, the low blood pressure, the sweating, the anxiety, maybe shortness of breath, certainly tachycardic, complaining that their heart is racing or they feel palpitations. They're here with you in the hospital or acute setting or even long-term care, and you're thinking, oh, God, what do I do with this patient? Well, here we go. First nursing action is to assess for symptoms like the ones I just gave you and then control the rate. So controlling the rate takes the highest priority because as stated earlier, tachycardia will decrease the cardiac output. So I got my nifty little deal here. I got my little hookup, my mnemonic, if you will. A, B, C, D, and then we'll go into other crap. But for now, what the hell is this? What, what, what is she doing? Well, B, is a beta blocker. As you know, the beta blocker will block the stress response. What happens when we're stressed? Tachycardia. So if I give you a beta blocker, I'm going to bring your heart rate down. I'm gonna bring it down pretty quickly. Beta blocker. Now watch this, you gotta watch the little teeny tiny pink words. Or, because if you forget the or, you currently don't have a license anymore, darling, because you gave all three and you were on some bullshit. Okay, so let's go. Now, so the C. What's the C? Well, the C is a calcium channel blocker. Now, beta blocker or calcium channel blocker. What's the united word here? Blocker, okay? Uh, yeah, when it comes to these medications, both of them will cause a bradycardia, and that's exactly what we need. Both of them bring down the heart rate. That's exactly what we need. They bring down the heart rate so much that if your patient is on a beta blocker or calcium channel blocker for their blood pressure, typical hypertension, or maybe they're even on a calcium channel blocker for angina or some other dysrhythmia, uh, then the patient would need to check their heart rate, right? Or the nurse would need to check their heart rate, vital signs before you give these meds. So we could use either or. So what's the difference anyway? Well, there's big differences. Number one, beta blockers are contraindicated in diabetics and in patients with significant lung disease. Because if you give a beta blocker to a patient with significant lung disease like COPD or um, a patient that has asthma, you can cause a bronchospasm. And if you give a beta blocker to a patient with diabetes, Remember, it blocks the stress response, right? So what do we do when we're stressed? We sweat, we shake, we, we're, we're, we're tachycardic, but it's gonna block it. So if you block my shaking, you block my tachycardia, you block my sweating, you just block the classic signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. In essence, I don't know, nor do you, whether my blood sugar's low, because you blocked all my signs and symptoms that would have told me that. So this is a problem, needless to say. Now, calcium channel blockers are wonderful. They're the drug of choice for dysrhythmias, but you gotta watch that potassium level with the calcium channel blocker, and you have to just watch the heart rate. It just, it can do funky stuff. 